Here we tackle topics relating to space exploration, including technology, engineering, and futurism. I'm your host, Thor. Many ideas for spacecraft propulsion systems have emerged from talented minds eager to imagine future transits of space, only to be eventually fundamentally outmoded by the changing landscape of astrophysics. The Alcubierre drive fits into this category of invalidated theoretical technologies, but has held on as an often seriously discussed method, even against a mounting wealth of scientific consensus repeatedly detailing its infeasibility. This is not without good reason, though. The Alcubierre represents the superluminal ideal we have fallen in love with as a society, which values pushing boundaries, shown by the popularity of the sights, sounds, and concepts superluminal travel has offered us through the lenses of popular media. Star Trek, Doctor Who, Warhammer, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, Farscape, Dune. Indeed, most popular sci-fi properties weave their stories using some form of faster-than-light travel as a necessity. Today, the public culture is fascinated with and enticed by this prospect. It is often regarded as the key for ascension as a spacefaring civilization, and it has served humans in this way in the media we consume. These may be the reasons why the Alcubierre continues to receive treatment as a valid mechanism by science communicators across the internet as well as by news media. When it was devised, it offered a potential for superluminal travel using understood physics. Today, we'll look at why the Alcubierre drive, as it was originally devised, needs to be put to rest with finality in order for us to move forward with investigating the manipulation of space-time for propulsion. We are not addressing the potential for faster-than-light travel as a concept, in the hope we can look forward to other ambitious and much more realistic FTL propulsion concepts in the future. Keep in mind, we'll briefly touch on related concepts, including causality, quantum oscillation, and other aspects of condensed matter physics. But in this episode, we're concerned about the Alcubierre concept, so we will only delve into the surface of these related and complex ideas. Astrophysics as a field of science, as well as our species' collective comprehension of how space beyond the edge of our solar system is composed, have both changed tremendously in the last few decades. Consider that humans have in the brief 40 to 50 year period following the technological applications of lasers and computer miniaturization, expanded our tangible knowledge of our universe so radically that fundamental galactic and universal theories and models have been overturned and modified nearly as quickly as new ideas can be conceived. Take, for example, the Bussard Ramjet or Ramscoop concept, pioneered by Dr. Robert Bussard. The drive would utilize an electromagnetic field to gather hydrogen from interstellar space to fuel a CNO-type nuclear fusion engine. This idea was initially promising, showing up in research publications, in hard science fiction, and covered by Carl Sagan's seminal Cosmos TV show and book. Subsequent findings in astronomy have revealed that the local bubble encapsulating the solar system is a volume with relatively little fuel material spread across it. This means while the Bussard ramjet is not a technically unfeasible concept, humans will not be able to employ this technology given our location in galactic space. Further calculations relating to the continually expanding basis of interstellar wind mechanics and nuclear fusion engineering have placed further restrictions on the buzzard ramjet's viability, relegating it to the graveyard of rocket engines that will almost certainly not be an option for humans in the future. The Alcubierre drive has several derivations, most well known being the Alcubierre Whiting and Froning drives. Rather than exhaustively discussing the mechanisms these drives are theorized to function upon, we'll discuss the specifics as they come up in our analysis of challenges to the concept. Understand that the Alcubierre operates in principle by expanding and contracting spacetime in front of and rearwards of an isolated bubble of normal spacetime in order to generate an acceleration of the local reference frame. Soft barriers potentially represent resolvable fundamental challenges to the Alcubierre's physical operation. 
They do not alone rule out the drive's possibility, but are also massive hurdles at this time with no broadly accepted mechanism for overcoming them. I have to mention causality foremost, but we won't go into much detail here. It's an accepted mantra today that light speed is also the speed of causality, and to exceed light speed creates the opportunity to time travel. We do not fully understand how space and time are specifically intertwined, so many thinkers will persist such a barrier may be surmountable using currently unknown, seemingly fantastic but physically possible mechanisms. This is acceptable for our purposes, as we don't need to rely on the principles of causality to discuss the shortcomings of the Alcubierre drive. The drive functions solely under the assumption of the existence of exotic matter. That is, specifically exotic matter which carries inverse mass and energetic properties in comparison to regular matter. This type of exotic matter certainly holds merit as a mechanic to resolve many of the problems presented by quantum mechanics as we understand it today, but it is currently an unproven and contestable phenomenon at this time. Relying on it may be necessary for the drive to function, but it may or may not exist in a form the drive will need, hence why it has made our soft barrier list. The energies theoretically required to accomplish warping of space-time are thought to be in excess of the combined mass energy of entire planetary bodies. Perhaps this is an obstacle which can be overcome using highly advanced antimatter elimination power systems, so we won't allow this factor to rule out anything conclusively. Bremsstrahlung radiation is another consideration, and we'll discuss this in the context of shielding against UNRWA radiation in our next section. This type of radiation may potentially be blocked from harming the craft, but again, no precedent in theory or application yet exists. The hard barriers are contradictions between the drive's essential mechanisms and fundamental physics. The Alcubierre drive, in all of its iterations, utilizes extremely powerful magnetic fields to accomplish its warping of space-time. This presents an insurmountable engineering problem, where there is no method available to construct a spacecraft capable of producing a warp bubble with any known types of physical matter. The Alcubierre drive relies on high acceleration of space, which transitions into the drive's field of influence. When distorted space encapsulates the craft, the vehicle itself is theoretically in a pocket of relatively static space, still permeable by radiation from local sources. Consider now that all reference frames experiencing acceleration produce a Rindler horizon, which follows the direction of their motion and approaches them in proportion to their acceleration. Just as the extent of our ability to receive light from the edge of our observable universe is blocked by an event horizon, our motion in any direction prevents us from receiving light from the direction opposite to this motion. Once near light speed is achieved and the warped spacetime has enclosed the observer like a bubble, it is subject to a closed event horizon, cutting it off from the rest of the universe, and this is very much the intention of the Alcubierre drive's isolated dilation of spacetime. One important concept to be aware of is the idea of quantum frequencies which permeate spacetime. Quantum frequencies are often presented, translated into simpler terms, as the constant flux of normal matter and antimatter quantum particles appearing and then annihilating in all normal space. Particles from what was empty space, some energy annihilation and therefore conserving energy. Hawking radiation results when one of these mirror particles is pulled from its pair by the event horizon of a black hole allowing one excited particle to escape with some energy stolen from the black hole. In broad conceptual terms, the UNRWA effect results from the interaction of quantum frequencies emanating from the Rindler horizon, and produces particles of radiation similar to Hawking radiation, in that they exhibit a thermal component. 
In essence, any body undergoing acceleration experiences an increase in temperature proportional to the degree of their acceleration throughout the black body radiation of their reference frame. I've drawn a direct comparison between the underlying mechanics driving the Unruh and Hawking radiation phenomenons for the sake of argument, but the two are not the same, even though under the equivalence principle their equations are identical. In very general terms, we believe an accelerating reference frame effectively compresses the available quantum frequencies within the frame, increasing the propagation of UNRWA radiation particles since quantum oscillations have imposed a higher lower limit on what quantum interactions can occur, without producing the UNRWA radiation. The reference frame of the accelerating observer will continue to become hotter, but this energy does not violate thermodynamics since any non-accelerating observer would not discern an increase in thermal activity when looking at the accelerating observer. So with a basic understanding of the UNRWA effect, we now know that an accelerating Alcubierre will be generating an increasingly proximal Rindler horizon, and experiencing proportionally greater thermal radiation as it does. The ship cannot ever begin to approach superluminal speeds because it will be subjected to thermal disruption by first burning and then vaporizing into plasma. And of course, the craft's electrical and mechanical systems will break down long before the vehicle can atomically dissociate. This presents the question of shielding a vehicle against this radiation. This question highlights our simplification of the UNRWA effect as a particle radiation when it really is better described as a black body radiation state. It is an energy flux originating from the Rindler horizon permeating the inertial reference frame, rather than a directional particle stream. Considering UNRWA radiation should behave similarly to Hawking radiation in the inertial frame, we can draw the comparison of shielding Hawking radiation instead as this phenomenon is more well understood. Theories attempting to explain the dark matter asymmetry problem postulate that, inside neutron stars, black holes can form from massive particles. In order to grow and eventually consume the star, these black holes need to overcome their loss of mass via Hawking radiation. The mechanism we assume is responsible is the shielding of radiation from a shell of polyblocked material. With no final transition states available, the Hawking radiation cannot expend its energy in transitioning the polyblocked material's electrons. Under our current understanding of particle physics, the only material in nature which can accomplish what our spacecraft needs to carry as a shielding only theoretically exists in the cores of neutron stars. This material would be polyblocked as a result of the consolidation of charges and particles within a super-dense body such as a neutron star, but other engineered materials at room temperatures and pressures, such as graphene, are polyblocked. So it may appear graphene or other nanoparticles might work as a shielding against UNRWA radiation. However, this will also produce non-trivial amounts of Bremsstrahlung radiation the electromagnetic radiation produced from the slowing of charged particles moving at high velocity as they're deflected by the material. So let's assume for the sake of the Alcubierre drive that we can fabricate a nanomaterial shield capable of arresting the UNRWA effect, which is conversely dense enough to arrest Bremsstrahlung radiation produced by relativistic particles, a feat which may not be physically possible. In doing so, we are transitioning from a purely theoretical discussion to imagining this spacecraft as an engineering problem, with all the associated considerations. We know that the craft will require tremendous amounts of energy to operate. This is a requirement, and not an assumption. This craft will, as with every other object or phenomenon in the universe at all scales, be bound by thermodynamic laws in its own inertial frame. This produces our fundamental contradiction, and before we look at what this contradiction is, let's quickly run over our assumptions we've made before arriving to this point. For the sake of argument, we can allow for a superluminal propulsion system to 1. Theoretically circumvent causality 2. 
Assume there is a yet undiscovered exotic matter suitable for use both in manipulating space-time and ready to be harnessed by electromagnetic energies a spacecraft could reasonably produce. 3. Assume humans can produce a polyblocking material effective against the UNRWA effect, and indeed that a polyblocking material is even effective against the UNRWA effect with the energies we've implied. We move forward operating on the premise that our assumptions are correct, and support the Alcubierre concept. The Alcubierre starship is still impossible. It's subject to the contradiction of energy requirement and preservation against UNRWA radiation, and I'll call this the unra alcubierre paradox. This paradox is as follows. The Alcubierre spacecraft must eliminate waste heat energy as a function of its operation, but the Alcubierre spacecraft must be totally shielded from its local space to avoid destruction by the UNRWA effect, while also necessarily thermally insulated from non-local space. Secondarily, consider that at sublight speeds, as the spacecraft accelerates, local space becomes hotter and less viable as a heat elimination component, increasing the amount of unshielded surface required to operate the craft and increasing its vulnerability. The spacecraft will never begin to approach superluminal speeds, and will not break the light speed constant, because of the thermal implications of the UNRWA effect, not because of causality. The root of this problem is the Alcubierre's isolation of its local space along with the spacecraft. Whereas a spacecraft accelerating without inertial attachment to the spacetime around it will not suffer the consequences of these effects, and instead face a different set of complications. Might the Alcubierre drive be used as a sublight propulsion system? It's not out of the question, and this idea is worth investigating. However, thermal limitations persist at all levels of the physics we can apply towards a propulsion system, so this approach is absolutely non-viable in producing anything more than a sublight propulsion system. We can look at it as such, but for now, the Alcubierre drive needs to be put to rest.